Along perilously steep paths, Black Rayler led the Queen and company towards Mahakam, a dwarven homeland. There, among snow-capped peaks, someone awaited. Rayla, you brought strangers! Gabor, I present to you Maeve, Queen of Lyria and Rivia. Ah, a queen! Crivens! Well then! We... A large shadow swept across the sky. The dwarf swallowed the rest of his greeting as all raised their gazes to see a dragon soar swiftly toward Mount Carbon. Keltilus, didn't be afeard. He is near threat to us. The dwarf had broken the silence gently, he himself quite familiar with this altogether unusual sight. And now, sit yourselves down afore the pottage grows cold. I... oh... but... flu... Drake? Stone shriveling marvel, innit? Makes you almost sad the lizards are dying out. Should you not worry more about the fate of your brethren? That creature will soon have all Mahakam aflame. Ha! Keltalus? No! He's lived here centuries. Harmless for the most part. Now, your grace. A taste? No, none. Though your offer of repast I value, good sir. Oh, oh no need of that. Gabor, please. Enchanted to make your acquaintance. Gabor here's a true local notable. From one of Mahakam's leading clans, the Zigrins. But then he wouldn't be our guide if he wasn't. A guide for all important guests. A pleasure. And as I said, I thank you for your hospitality. But I've no time to feast now. I must speak to your ruler at once. Hmm. Don't mean no offence, but Elder in Chief Bruverhoog's a recluse of sorts, as humans go. Didn't even meet the ones that wear crowns. But I suppose I could, meaning if you drafted a letter. Her Majesty's got Demaven's signet, given willingly. Ah. Well, that's a sheep of a different sort. We didn't let many human folk into Mahakam. And for good reason. So those who we let come through the second gate get blindfolded. Just after they've surrendered their arms at the first. But you've the leaden ring. Given one of your kind to confirm trust and amity. So, we're certain we can treat you as one of our own. Elder and Chief's in the past visiting. Look into his flock. Come on. No reason you two shouldn't jabber right quick. Though the Lyrian infantry rose half an L taller than the dwarf, he moved with remarkable ease through the waist-high snow, while those behind him slipped and stumbled on the ice-slick rocks. Neve and Raider trailed the party, so they might speak in private. Non-humans you despised immensely, I believed. They don't bother me a bit. Long as they stay in their lands, seek fortune nowhere else. I detest only those who infest our cities, humbly insist on belonging to our guilds, holding office in our institutions, armies. Yet some find a place for themselves, blending marvelously. It's never lasting. They're different, odd, strains inevitable. And then they'll always stab a human in the back. The ring. However did Demavend come to possess it? Elder in Chief himself gave it to him. Years ago. A decade. Perhaps more. Why? Oh, you must have heard the tale, Your Grace. You see, formerly, Faltus of Temeria's sovereign of Mahakam, he believed it was his right to tax any Leand lands, so he sent collectors. Well, the dwarves felt stripped, so they stripped the collectors down to their natural state. Put them in beer barrels, they then roll down the mountainside. Ah, oh, my. That incited Faltus ire, I'm sure. Indeed. Ember hot ire. A punitive expedition was assembled immediately. We're about to set off when Demaven managed to dissuade Faltus. Elder in chief gave him the ring in thanks. I see it all now. Prevented Mahakam slaughter, Demaven did. Your Majesty. Demaven prevented a slaughter, true. But Faltus in the Temerians, not the dwarves. Mahakaman fortifications. 
Well, you'll soon see. No human will take them. Ever. The Elder's gratitude, then? Not certain I know where it came from. Had the Dwarves crushed the Temerians? No, when they had done so, what would have happened? Why, retaliation against all non-humans in Temeria. Bruva knew this, so in fact, Demoven saved them. Exceptionally provident, the Elder-in-Chief. And shrewd as a swarm of snakes. So when you speak, beware his hiss and weigh your every word. Rayla, your aid proved an unexpected bounty. I received orders. I fulfilled them to their end. My, I see. And what will you do now? Our paths diverge, not more. I return home now, when new orders surely await. Demovent has fled to the Redanian court, where he shall cower and not show his mug until spring has sprung. You know this. Would you not prefer to remain in my ranks? Fight the Black Ones bound at the hip? No, Your Grace. God speed you on your way then, Rayla. And you on yours, Your Grace. Lips pursed, eyes locked, Queen and Warrior took each other's measure one last time. Then Rayla gave what might be termed an excessively courtly bow, turned on her heel and rode off down a slope. Meave gazed after her until she disappeared behind a snowbank, then gave her mount a solid dose of her heels and rode on irked as a hare in a briar patch. You have no love for me, do you? We are not of the same stock, Your Grace, so it's hardly my place to... <laughs> stock and place be ploughed. We must speak from our hearts. Two women. No enmity. Tell me why. I did something, something you could not abide. It was what you did not do, rather. In Edurn, you are far too lenient on those elves. As you are ever, prepared to forgive, extend clemency. What would you have me do? Let you cleanse, rid the wood of all non-humans? Wickedness demands wickedness. Blood calls for blood. Very well, Rayla. Then go and drink of it if you must. Lips pursed, eyes locked, Meave and Rayla took each other's measure a last time. The warrior then bowed in a manner some might think excessively courtly, turned on her heel and rode off down a slope. Meave gazed after her until she disappeared behind a snowbank, then gave her mount a solid dose of her heels and rode on, irked as a hare in a briar patch. Rayla, your aid proved an unexpected bounty. Your Grace, to fight arm in arm with one so bold as you is an honor, an honor from which I'll not readily resign. I was to lead you to Mahakam, King Demoven's order. As to my duties afterwards, I receive no instructions. So until a sealed scroll containing such arrives, I will serve your grace under her command. Demovend is your king. You must return. Forgive me. My king has sought refuge in Redania at the court there. He will not ride out before spring has sprung, nor will he need my sword and... It matters not at all. So be it. Godspeed on your path. Your Grace. Rayla uttered not one word more as she gathered her chattels and then rode off down a slope. Meave gazed after the warrior until a snowbank obscured the view, after which the Queen's company resumed its march. The Queen herself sensing relief, its source unknown. I'm content, Rayla. The times are such that no aid can I dismiss and yours in particular. I'm humbled, Your Grace. Let us move on. I've grown amply curious of this Elder-in-Chief, this... Bruva Hoog. Your Grace, I have a message for your eyes only.
Your Grace? Sir Ake, you disobeyed my order. Yes, but... There are no bots. The words of the Queen are not verses from the good book to be interpreted as you see fit. They are to be heeded by all, unconditionally. Your Majesty, when your force I joined, I made clear I'd swear no oath of allegiance to you. For this I'd sworn already to the gods, and to scripture as contained in the good book. I abet you in your fight against Nilfgaard willingly, because this immoral empire has demonstrated injustice profound. But this does not mean I can turn a blind eye to trespasses on your part, nor that I shan't try to correct them. In that case, there's no place for you in my force. Understood. Then I shall embark again on my solitary path without delay. Farewell, Queen. All true. Such was our accord. I must respect it, I haven't a choice. I thank you, Your Majesty. Many wander, go astray. Precious few acknowledge it. Farewell, Ake. Yes, Your Grace? How go things, Reynard? You and Gascon get along now, I hope. Well, you might say we've established a certain rapport, Your Grace. Tell me more, friend. I don't pry into his affairs, nor he into mine. I'd prefer it if my commanders worked together more closely. Your Grace, the man's a brigand. Oh, Reynard, he was a brigand. I must disagree, I fear. Yes, he stopped thieving for now, but only because it's convenient, so to speak. Gascon isn't a changed man. He still hasn't an ounce of honor, dignity. Yet he has a unit of armed men, without which we'd be much worse off. Might not even have survived. Agreed. The Strays are excellent fighters. I'd be the first to admit it. I only fear they might turn on us. Leap at our throats when we least expect it. It's time I attended to other matters. Your Grace? Farewell, Ake. Hey ho, how's my favorite queen in the north? You and Reynard, do you get along? Like a cat and a hound. <laughs> get it? Because they call me. Yes, yes, your jests are easily understood. Far more difficult to enjoy. That's probably true, in your royal high and mightiness's case. Will you answer my question? <sighs> we get along because we must. Though it'd be far easier if he pulled the lance from his ass. Haven't heard a truer word in a long while. What was that? Nothing. Nothing. It's time I attended to other matters. Farewell. Yes? Rayla, might I ask you a personal question? Certainly, ma'am, but I can't guarantee I'll answer. You see, Nilfgaard marched into my land, invaded, stole my crown, slaughtered my folk, and topped it all off by turning my own son against me. Yet, the hatred I hold for them is a mere shadow of the passion that grips you. You lust for the blood of every last Scoia'tael. Haven't heard a question yet, Your Grace. What did they do to you, Rayla? What happened to make you who you are? Elves and humans, they can interbreed, but you must know that. My mother was an elf, making me half of one. We lived in a hamlet, and all around us knew. The other children would bully me, beat me, spit in my face. No, I. Because they feared the Squirtel. But powerless, fully aware they could not defend themselves, they took their fear and shame out on me. The Scoia tells so hatred and terror between the races. And that will not change. It will not disappear. As long as their bloody rebellion continues. Demoven's reason for so fiercely defending Aldersburg, I must say it caught me quite by surprise. Not me. King went to that brothel every time he stopped at Aldersburg, which was oft. He made sure of that. I told him he'd sting a girl with his serpent one day, but he wouldn't listen. <laughs> My. I see Demoven couldn't keep anything secret from you. Didn't have a choice, really. 
When Edirne was not at war, I served as his bodyguard, followed him everywhere and saw everything. My king enjoys life, enjoys pleasures and indulges often, but none of this has hindered his ability to govern the realm bloody well. I must go. We'll speak later. Yes, my lady? You choose not to follow your king, Xavier. Why? To fight in the field, with you. This was my wish, my lady. But what of your home? Rosberg must be rebuilt. Engineers are needed. I have no kin in Rosberg. No soul left for me there. All I've left is revenge. I understand. Other matters await my attention. We shall speak later. As you wish, my lady. Isabel? Apologies. Thoughts consume me sometimes. Is there something you need? Since we left Edirne, you've seemed unsettled. Is all in order? I've seen many wars in my time. All ugly, all repulsive. But what the Imperials did at Aldersburg was... It was unforgivable. Nilfgaard. That's what it does, Isabel. They seek here to repeat the rape of Sintra, the slaughter there. Yes, I saw that. I was there. And at Sodden. Then you know of what they're capable. After Sodden, I took an oath never to take part in another war. Such suffering, such hatred, senseless, all those deaths. Senseless deaths? Our troops sacrificed their lives in defense of their homeland, loved ones. I believe, I must believe there's a better way. Forgive me, Mum. I must gather my thoughts. Never mind about me, though. I shall perform my duties to my utmost, as ever, as always. You speak with my soldiers a good deal. Said so yourself. I'd like to know what about. Hmm. Corporal Larkin, ma'am. Do you know him? Captain Oisin, perhaps? Or Lieutenant Teagan? Of course I know them. Among my best, they've served me loyally for years. You know them. But did you know that in fleeing Lyria, the corporal left behind a newborn daughter? His wife was in confinement when you gave the order to march. The corporal could not go to see them. And true, the captain has no wife, no child. But he's not seen his brother in five years. Never once been granted leave. Your General Odo's orders always taking precedence. Allow me to guess. You shall now tell me Tegan abandoned his sick mother to follow me. No, ma'am. Count Caldwell's men murdered the Lieutenant's kin. Retaliation for his joining your rebellion. He learned of this just recently. Enough. You've made your point. Yet even were I to order them to return, they wouldn't listen. They know they've got nothing to go home to while Nilfgaard occupies our land. Duty calls. I must go. Of course. Should you need me, I'll be here. Your Grace, I need to speak with your quartermaster. Hey, excuse my elvish, but I can't drink that goat's piss he serves in the mess. Ugh, Reynard's doing no doubt. He doesn't like the men to drink too much. To be blunt, ma'am, what Reynard himself needs is to get good and bluttered for once in his stiff life. So, I have a proposal for you. A shipment of the best dwarven mead and lager. I can arrange for you to arrive. Trust me, the men's morales nae like to be a problem when they pour a bit of fire in their guts. Hmm. Good point. Very well. Oh, give my thanks, dear Queen. A few more days of that and I'd have been lapping up puddle water. I trust you'll arrange the details. Uh, of course. No worries. You didn't ken how happy a dwarf you've made me. Ah, right. And the men too, of course. Stiff or no, Reynard's right on this one. An army of sots will do me no good at all. Your cab, your rules. Ah, least of my pipe. You're a Zigrin, are you not? I know the name. 
One of your clan slew the dragon Ockvist. Aye. You're thinking of Yarpin. Cousin of my cousin. Left my hackam when I was but a wee snot. Decent enough dwarf, but never could conform to our basic tenets and laws. Though, admittedly, we've so damned many it's hard to keep them from leaking out your ears. Is it that bad? Hmm. I'll put it this way. Among human folk, you can't steal, brawl, murder. All the basics. In Mahakam, we've got laws about how to braid our beards. But I'm no one to complain. The Zilgrins are well to do, one of the richer clans. Got more than enough goods to suit our needs. Though, we've got some bads as well. What do you mean? Bah! Nay worth your time. I didn't mean to bother you. Sides, best to jabber of such things over a cold pipe. Or keg? Your elder. I'd like to know more. Do tell me about him, please. Hmm. But one tough horsing, Bruva. Stubborn as an old goat, as you'll soon see for yourself. All in all, though, he's near as scary as some say. Been keeping the clans in check for some two centuries now. Which is near a small feat, I might add, no. No conflicts between them all this time. Are you certain? Ha! Ha! I, I, I can't tell if you're jesting. <laughs> At each other's throats each day they are. Breckenrigs despise the Chives. Dalbergs would scratch out the Hoog's eyes given half the chance. As for us, we hate them arse-licking fooksies. But Brewer's got his ways, keeps each yen in line. If not for him, Mahakam would have fallen to bits ages past. Thank you for your insight, Gabor. I've learned a great deal. Why? Around 150 years ago, when the elves were fighting that hopeless war against your folk, the Elder in Chief ordered the pass to Mahakam sealed tight. If it weren't for that, we'd have ended up like the pointy ears. As it was, we waited for the shite storm to abate. Didn't he open the pass and stretch your legs again till it were safe? Yes, I remember. The manufacturers in Rivia have yet to recover. With all due respect, Your Grace, your workshops forge utter crap. It's near our fault that human folk prefer dwarven goods. Basic market principles, that's all it is. I feel enlightened, Gabor. Thank you. We shall return to this conversation later. No skin off my back. We see each other, Your Grace.
A hearty Mahakam welcome to you. What an honor. Even the arbalists salute us with cocked quarrels. Oh, that well. An ounce of prevention saves a slag heap of trouble. None too shabby as views go, eh? Were it not for the howling wind, I'd make a sketch. Meave rode slowly, her surroundings interesting to her, her ears keen to take in the cacophony of sounds. The sharp whistle of wind rushing past towering peaks, the squeak of wagon wheels rolling over frozen snow, and the roar of beasts. What the...? I dare not venture a guess. Hmm. Gabor scratched his chin. An ice troll. Or one of them Barbigazar bejabas. These beasts, are they tame? As the dragon? <laughs> Not in your life. Fierce horses, every last one of them. Spring clean in year past, one year bit my arm clear off. The Queen's brow rose in a silent inquiry. All oh, right. You don't quite ken the context. Each spring, with the melting of the snows, a good bit of that filth comes out the ground. That's when Bruver Hoog summons all dwarves for spring cleaning. We cut down as much of the filth as we can, and that means relative calm the rest of the year. Out of the corner of her eye, Meave noted a dark shape darting between rock formations. Calmly, she drew her sword and brandished it a time or two to warm up her stiff arms. Seems it is our lot to assist you with this cleaning. Lyrians, arms at the ready. Prepare to fight!
Stop standing around like corns on a toe! Get to work! Watch your heads! <laughs> Watch out! It's rolling our way! You'll never take me alive! Get into work. You sure about that? Some splaining to do. As the wails of speared Shalemars died down, the crowd of Mahakaman infantry parted. A dwarf stepped forth, grey as a snow fox, wrinkled as a prune. He walked with difficulty, supporting himself on a battle axe. It's two heads dripping blood. This would be our elder in chief, Bruvar Hoog. And who might your guests be, Gabor? Meave, Queen of Lyria and Rivia, and our associates in court. My regards, elder. I come. You come for something. Coins, my first wager. Fighting bodies, my second. Well, what is it you want? I'm on in the years, I, but I've not gone dotty. Yeah, you menfolk. You got to fall on hard times to remember us dwarves. I've come with a design in mind, I cannot deny. But hear me out and you shall see. She's armed! Gabor! Why the devil did you let her in here like that? Armed without a sack or her heat! She has the leaden ring, Elder. A gift from a king. From Demavand, lassie, I ken that already. Trust a man, give him something of value, and he'll go and give it away as easy as a street whore gives away nubs. It's a good thing he didn't pawn it. Sons of humans. You interrupt me. I'm not accustomed, for you see, I am a queen. That's so. But I've heard you were stripped a crown and title some time past. Not so much a queen no more. Nay, don't you fear? Tidings of that sort reach us here, too. Her Majesty was shamefully betrayed, it is true. Yet the unified throne of both realms remains hers, as the laws hold. Laws, small shite and bare paws! I can well the kind of respect you human folk accord your laws. We've signed pacts, treaties of many over the years. And each time but a couple of years had pass before you shat on all the terms. Now, on a normal day, I'd have you all thrown clear out of this land I love. I've travelled far to see you. Hear me out, I beg you. Ah, let it be my loss. Go on, heave her away. Nilfgaard has overrun my realms. It has overrun Edurn. The Blackclads are at the foot of Mahakam. They will seek to overrun your land sooner or later as well. 
We must act. We must react together. While there is still time. Time? What do you care a time, lass? Got how many summers to you? Forty, maybe? Had you grown up amongst dwarven folk, at your age you'd be learning to crochet dolls. No more than that. I've seen four hundred summers come and go. And I've been elder for two hundred. And you know what I've learned in that time? That meddling in your idiot scraps doesn't ever bring any good. Now, on a normal day, I'd have you all thrown clear out of this land I love. But you've the leaden ring, and that grants you the right to hospitality. And here, in Mahakam, laws and rights are sacred. You may stay in the pass as long as you wish. Young Zigrin will serve as your guide. And once you've tired of the mountains, well, you can the way down into the valleys. I bid you farewell. My lord Elder, with all due respect, we came to your aid. We smote the beasts with you, yet... And who the demons is this son? Count Reynard Odo. Ho <laughs> ho, Odo, Lodo, Bodo! <laughs> now, you listen and listen well. We didn't ask for aid, and you know why? Because I've my dignity. Not like some. Mates and wenches! Spring cleaning's done, beast cullen's over. Mount Carbon beckons us home. Follow me! Your Grace, be not dismayed. We will find a way. No, Reynard, we've lost. We have none to whom we can turn, no land where we can flee. Not so, Your Majesty. We've Redania, Temeria, strong realms that yet could aid us. And shall we wander so from court to court? Our hand outstretched like a beggar's near a temple. Reynard, I don't see it. And frankly, I've had my fill of humility. Your Grace, might I draw you aside a wee moment for a jabba? Reynard, please excuse me. Manage we shall, true. Though damned if I know how. We have none other to whom we can turn, no other land where we can flee. Let us convene in council, Your Grace. Consider together what's to be done. We've yet Redania, Temeria. Your Grace, might I draw you aside a wee moment for a jabba? Reynard, please excuse me. Well, what is it you want? I ken the Elder in Chief didn't make a good first impression. <laughs> and the second? Is it any better? Mm, to be quite frank, no. I'll try elsewise. Not all's lost, trust me. Brewer's a stubborn goat. No doubt about it, but a goat to be persuaded. And I happen to ken how. The selfless impulse to help? I don't believe it exists. So before you describe how you aim to aid me, be kind enough to explain why you wish to do so. Unsolicited, mind you, and clearly against your elders' wishes. A query of my own to answer yours. Do you ken when Bruver Hoog last strode down the mountains into your lowlands? I know not. While King Sambuk sat on the throne? Point of fact, never. Hoog was born here and he'll die here, like most Mahakam and dwarves. Whereas I'm a frequent visitor in your human lands. Been an emissary to royal courts, trade guilds, mummers, troops, and I've eyes. I can see all the rubbish goes on between yous. Nilfgaard's insatiable. The Black Clads will not stop till they've put the whole continent neath their boot. From Ophir in the south to the Dragon Mountains in the north, gods forbid they grip all the Nordlings realms in their vice. Cause then we'll have their hordes all round, controlling all the trade routes, supply lines, diversions even. And then they'll control terms and prices. Ooh. We dwarves have never been on a lead, let alone a short one. So. In short, we'll all be better off with the black clads back across the Yaruga. And I've seen your grace. Seen you in battle. You've brawn and bite, and with the right support, you can drive them back. I ken that well. Very well, I'm all ears. What must we do to spur Bruverhoog to aid us? Hmm. I might start with the thorn in our side that have beasts. 
A bigger thorn than most expect. See, in our never-ending search for gold, we dug deep, too deep, and reached abysses where monsters are born, or however they come to be. Soon as it turns a bit warmer, they crawl out to feed. And there's more every year. What you saw there, the spring cleaning, that's just light yearly upkeep. It didn't go at the source of the blight. Every spring we cull enough so we can live and trade and mine normal-like. But there are corridors in the upper valleys midst the peaks, where more lie waiting to pounce. So many, there's settlements that have done been abandoned. I still fail to see how this relates to myself and Bruva. Your Majesty, slay the beasts down to their last, and you'll win the hearts of the clans. All of them. And with the clans behind you, why? The Elder will have no choice. He'll bend an ear, treat you serious. You got two sites through which beasts swarm in great numbers. There's Daver's Abyss and an abandoned underground settlement called Burra's Rump. Destroy those, collapse the corridors, problem solved. Hmm. You colour the solution as simple and known. Why has Bruva Hoog not gone at the matter? <laughs> you must learn one thing about us dwarves of Mahakam. Customs, traditions, why, we're obsessed. Goes thrice for Bruva, the Elder deliberates weeks on end. And that's in considering if we shouldn't wear suspenders, cause they might be through its side, and should thus be forbidden. We've a set of laws, the Four Dwarves Codex. One of its tenants says, Dare ye not close a corridor once oped? So, no self-respecting dwarf can nor will do it. But you, you're free out with. The laws didn't apply. You've a free hand in sealing the corridors from which the beasts come. Collapse them, flood them, I dinna ken, but solve the grief once and for all. And this, t'would suffice? I believe it would. Uh, but, but, but find your other ways to win the heart of a clan of Bruver itself. Do so. Can he bring no harm? Hmm. All this sounds rather toilsome, yet... I do favour this to losing another moon seeking out a court where we would at first be welcomed, only later to hear another rebuke. You've my gratitude, Gabor. You've shown me a way. Very well. Let us think on these beasts. See what's to be done. I've come to the conclusion your Elder-in-Chief is not fond of guests. Fond? That's near the quarter of it. He hates them with seething passion. But you're damned lucky. Why's that? Let you in, didn't he? Mahakam was cordoned off completely through the outside world for many a long year. Clans finally forced Bruva to at least let in peddlers and emissaries. <laughs> Though he dragged his feet as long as he could. Quiet, wench. Oh, you'll scare the fish off. Crevens! Trout was already nipping at the bait. Then you came along and frightened it off. Duval shies!
Watch your heads! <laughs> Life is mine now! Ever have a storm knock out one of your teeth? I bit the white of an eye from half a league away. I'm all done in a jiffy. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. Thing about slings, they hide well. Company, forward march. Wait, you're serious? Hey?
Fear not, for faith guides me. So much anger and suffering. For what? There's been a mistake. I'm no mage.
The dwarves are demanding a pretty sum, but their steel's worthy of any crown. No offense meant. The Rivian blades don't hold a candle to their Mahakaman cousins. Their elders just a tad eccentric. The dwarves are demanding a pretty sum, but their steel's worthy of any crown. <laughs> 